All right, we're still on Mendelian genetics. Now we're starting with blood types. Okay, blood types and who can donate to who, who can receive from who, and so on, so on, so on. Okay, so there are four different types of blood types. Okay, there's A, B, AB, and O. Personally, I'm an O blood type. Okay, those are the four different blood types, and those are the only four options you can do. There are positive, like A positive and A negative, stuff like that. We're not going to deal with that. That's called the RH factor. We're not going to deal with that with this uh, lesson. All right, so the genotypes for each of these, okay? You, for the A blood type, you're either homozygous dominant or you're heterozygous. Okay, those are the only two options. And it's the same for B, homozygous dominant B or heterozygous. Okay, with AB, this is an example of codominance, which we've talked about, okay, where both the A and the B are shown. So therefore, the phenotype or the physical representation, they're both A's and B's. Then with blood type O, it's recessive, so homozygous recessive. Like you can see up here, the reason it's heterozygous because you got dominant and recessive. Same thing with the A, dominant recessive. Okay, so for blood types A and B, each red blood cell has a certain protein on it that kind of acts like a name tag. It basically kind of like sticks off the side of the blood, the red blood cell. And this is how the body recognizes its own, its own blood, as well as versus something to attack. So basically your immune system, your white blood cells wander around, it bumps into one of your own red blood cells, it recognizes that name tag, so it's fine, okay? But if something gets in there like bacteria or viruses or whatever, your immune system knows to attack it, okay? However, that immune system, like let's say for example, your type A, your immune system is used to all the tags that say, uh, that have the little A tags on them. But if you get a B blood cell in you, your body doesn't care that it's still a red blood cell. Your body cares about the little tags on it. Therefore, it attacks it. Okay, it's the same thing with AB. Like this is my blood over here. I don't have any tags at all. Okay, that's the big difference. Like if you're A, B, or A, B, you have blood tags, mine simply doesn't. So my body, I can't deal with any of these other blood types in my body because my immune system will freak out and attack it, which obviously is bad if it attacks your own blood or, or you know, somebody who gives you blood. Okay, now who can give to who? Here's the huge table on how it all works. So let's start with me. I'm O blood type. This is my phenotype. My genotype is lowercase o, lowercase o. I can donate to everyone, okay? I can give to A, I can give to B, I can give to A, B, as well as I can give to O. So in this one here, think, my blood doesn't have any tags at all. Therefore, let's take the B blood person. They don't care that I have no tags because the things that are going to make them freak out and attack it are these little tags, not the actual red blood cell itself. Okay, so I can give my blood to A, because I don't have any tags. I can give my blood to B, because I don't have any tags, as well as to AB, I don't have any tags. So they refer to the type O blood person as the universal donor, because I can donate to everyone. Okay, now I can only receive blood from a fellow O blood type person. So going back to that table, if I got blood that had that tag, my body would freak out and attack it. If I got blood with that tag on it, my body would freak out and attack it. And then the same thing here. So I can only get blood that has no tags on it. Okay, now with AB, their genotype, A, B, codominance, both dominant, both you see in the phenotype, so that's why it's AB. Okay, they can only give to AB, but they can receive blood from everybody. So if they're donating, so they can only give to themselves. Because if they try to give to B, those A tags will make it so their body freaks out. But if they're trying to be nice and they give it to A, those B blood tags, the A person will freak out and that immune system will kill them. Okay? And then if you give, like if they give the A, B blood to me, there's both the A tags and the B tags, so my body even more so freaks out and attacks it. Okay, but they can receive blood from everybody because they're used to all the tags or no tags. Okay, 
both with A and with B. They're kind of the same thing here. Obviously, their genotypes are going to be a little bit different. Homozygous dominant or heterozygous, or homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Now, they can donate blood to kind of themselves or somebody like them, or the AB, because again, the AB person is used to those A tags. They can receive blood from O, like we talked about up here, the universal donor, and they can receive from A. Same thing for B. They can give to their own blood types or receive the AB blood type. Or excuse me, they can donate to the AB blood type because they're used to those B tags. But they can only receive, again, from the universal donor as well as somebody like themselves. So let's do a, a monohybrid cross or a Punnett square with this. So we'll cross a homozygous dominant A blood type with a heterozygous A blood type, so dominant recessive. So like we've always done, put one parent on one side, one parent on the top, and you cross them. So this would be capital A, capital A, or homozygous dominant. Okay, next one you can see is heterozygous, capital lowercase, homozygous dominant down here again, then heterozygous over here, dominant recessive. Okay, this should be making sense. This these Punnett squares, we should be doing a lot of them. You need to be comfortable with them. Next one, let's cross homozygous A with heterozygous B. Put one parent on one side, one parent on the other. Fill it in. Now you can see here's where the AB blood comes in. Now, remember, think of this as like the alphabet. This wouldn't be type BA blood. You always go in alphabetic order here. Okay, so you got AB blood type here. The A comes all the way over. So here's an A blood type, heterozygous type A. Now here is going to be the AB blood type again, and then the A blood type over here. Okay, we should be making sense with this kind of stuff. One more. Let's cross heterozygous A, heterozygous B. Okay, now we got A, B, we got them all crossed together. So right here, you'd have codominant AB blood type. Next one, heterozygous A blood type, A lowercase o. Over here, you'd have the homozygous, or excuse me, the heterozygous B, then the homozygous recessive O. So in this Punnett square, you have all four blood types. There's AB, there's A, there's B, and there's O. So if, you had, if you, the parents were like this, they would have a 25% chance of getting any of blood types. Okay, whereas the other ones, they had the different chances that were a lot easier to figure out. Okay, so here's blood typing. Again, just basic crosses like we've done. Stick with the codominance theory, but with your thinking about codominance, there is also a recessive. Okay, so use this video to figure out the blood typing worksheet, which there's also a video on.